marvelous is always beautiful. Anything marvelous is beautiful. In fact, only the marvelous is beautiful. Surrealism emerged from Dada, a movement that developed in several cities almost simultaneously amid and in response to the First World War. Dada poets, such as Tristan Zara, express their passion for the irrational and the nonsensical in terms of a rejection of the bankrupt political, cultural and nationalistic values which, they argued, had created the war in the first place. In the aftermath of that war, which claimed over 17 million lives, Paris remained a melting pot for artists and writers who'd spread around Europe and America during the conflict. Dada thrived upon discord and anarchy, and consequently began to disintegrate and factionalise in the early 1920s. It was during this period of infighting and implosion that poet André Breton emerged as the leader shifting Dada's focus away from its love of anarchy, negativity and nonsense towards more intellectual pursuits involving automatic writing, dreams, psychoanalysis and chance. In many ways, surrealists sought to overthrow what they saw as the oppression in modern society by demolishing its obsession with rational thought, while emphasising the strangeness of the everyday. When we think about surrealism today, we would normally think about visual artists. Many people would be able to name Salvador Dali as a surrealist artist. But in fact, it took a while for surrealism to embrace visual art and to realise that visual art could open up many new avenues in understanding the workings of the unconscious. Among the techniques used to do this were hypnotic trances and automatic drawing, both designed to overcome conscious control. Breton's aspirations were not limited, then, to establishing an art movement. Rather, surrealism was part of a full-scale revolution. But when you have this very strong feeling of uh, and this need of revolt, need of freedom, and you are born into a period where so many uh, events invite you to get revolted and uh, threw over what is going on in the world and be disgusted with it, <coughs> and so on. <coughs> uh, it is absolutely natural that uh, the work you produce is a revolutionary work. The first magazine published by Surrealism was called La Révolution Surréaliste. The title had many different resonances. It could mean both the possibility of the liberation of sexual desire and also the complete liberation of society modelled on a communist revolution. Surrealism became a potent force in many countries by the 1930s. But in Britain, interest was only just beginning to stir. Curious artistic explosion, you might call it, in the London of 1936. The arrival of the movement called Surrealism. This was, in a way, another kind of revolution. Britain in the 30s was not what you might call in the forefront of experiment in the visual arts. Indeed, very much otherwise. Everything that was going on in modern painting was going on somewhere else, mainly in Paris. Part of this revolution was the school called Surrealism, and it certainly wasn't everybody's cup of tea by any means. Anyhow, the artist Roland Penrose, who lived in France and was very much with the trends, came and organised the first Surrealist exhibition in London at the new Burlington Galleries. It didn't by any means go unnoticed. Among those who also lent works to the exhibition was the English poet Edward James, whose enormous wealth enabled him to support artists such as Dali and Magritte. Surrealism always had an internationalising agenda, and one dimension of that was the fact that Surrealist poets and artists were also collectors and promoters of Surrealism, showing their fellow artists' work in exhibitions and promoting it to one another. Surrealist artworks are objects of desire, and the ways in which surrealist art has been collected display many of the idiosyncratic passions of surrealism itself. 